<laughs> hey, this Sunday, um, we, we are, we're going to start together. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a, a <laughs> study on how to read the Bible. And this is kind of an introductory study before we study the book of Revelation. And uh, we'll be working out of a text uh, by Michael Joseph Brown. And uh, we'll be taking a look at uh, some of the key ways to look at the Bible to get the most that we can out mm -hmm. of our reading. Mm -hmm. And then we will be starting uh, next month in mm -hmm. the book of Revelation, and we're going to be using Jane E. Eford's book here, Revelation for Today, and we'll be looking through that book as one of our guide books, and there'll be mm -hmm. other sources as well. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, we hope that you're able to join us. It will be at Albright United Methodist Church in Ponca City at 4 o'clock p.m. on Sundays. This Sunday. On Sundays. And, uh, yep. You're all welcome. Yes, and I'm excited about this new Where do I go? Welcome. We are so glad you joined us this day, this special Sunday, as we celebrate together the Lord's Day, this Sabbath day, and right. we welcome Tonkawa First United Methodist Church. Welcome. Right, and St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Welcome. And Prairie Chapel United Methodist Church. And, and Albright United Methodist <laughs> Church. And all our NOC students who are, who are going to be returning this next week um, at the Northern Oklahoma College. Welcome. And those of you who join us, no matter where you are in this world, we welcome you today. Let's worship together. It's pretty easy for us to be enticed with new. Like a new car. A new home. This is cute. A new job. <laughs> a new trend. A new look. A new you. Nope. And maybe that's not a bad thing. Because our creator seems to be all about new. Like a new promise. A new command. Hi. New life. <laughs> new mercies. And even a new year. God not only loves new, but promises to make all things new. And we are invited into the sacred work. In our words. Oh, come here. Let me help you with that. Our actions. Sure, of course. And our generosity. So I guess the question is. So, what's new with you?
scripture verse today comes out of Proverbs 29:18. That's right, where it says, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Yeah, and the law is summed up in loving God and loving mm -hmm. everyone else. Loving so. the way that God loves. Yeah, That's yeah, God's yeah. Law. all right. Yeah. You know, um, here we are at the start of the year. It's a new year again. Happy and, New uh, Year. <laughs> yeah, Happy New Year. And and um, people make resolutions and everything at New Year's, and it's kind of interesting. And I, I think that's probably good, although they never seem to work out for me too well. <laughs> but having a plan is so important. It is. You know, it really is. Consider this. I know you, you didn't play football much, maybe a little flag football with a kid <laughs> or something, but, but the football game is a game of strategy. Mm -hmm. And... Um, no matter how strong your team is or how fast it is, it's going to be the team that has the best strategy that wins. It has a plan. Yeah, that's, that's why right. the guys all huddle up together, you know, and <laughs> tell secrets to each other. Without strategy, uh, you have to be extremely lucky. And, and yep. the luck is based on the fact that the other team has no strategy. That's right. Yeah. And, and sports is, is like that. Yeah, I mean, it is. You have yeah. to have a plan or a strategy if you want to win, yeah. right? Now, well, I'm not big into sports. 
sports analogies, you know, in a sense, I think the same is true in ministry. Yes, yeah. yes. And it's the same with God's people. We need to be a people who have a vision. Right. Uh, a strategy yeah. that moves us. A yeah. strategy that moves us in the same direction together, right? Uh, we need to have a clear understanding of why we exist. And, and why we do what we do. Yeah, and why yeah. we're doing what we're doing, yeah. right? That's right. Yeah. In the history of God's people, they were nomadic, which means that they were wandering people. They were itinerant. Uh, mm -hmm. They lived in tents, and they traveled, and they moved with God. That's right. And, yeah. and we today, we're called to do the same. We're called to move with God, and we're to go wherever the Spirit of God that leads us. Uh, yeah. We're not called to be stagnant, right? Right. <laughs> We need to be sensitive to the leading of God's Spirit mm -hmm. in the world and come alongside the work that God is doing. And that's that's, right. that's the significance. Where yeah. God is at work today, mm -hmm. that's where we need to be. And that should be the point of our planning. It should be our vision. And be. without that vision, us working in God's vision uh, for us, mm -hmm. uh, people perish. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. anyway... The problem often comes, though, uh, that we've I've discovered in my life is that sometimes we're too close to see. <laughs> we're too close to see a new perspective, right? Right, uh, like when we bought our new truck. Yeah. Uh, and uh, right. I, I never noticed Toyota Tundra trucks until <laughs> we owned one, and now they seem to be everywhere. Is it <laughs> you know? now, yeah. Yeah, so they're yeah. they're everywhere, but but our because our vision wasn't you know uh, focused on to identify the the trucks before right. we weren't yeah. having a vision of them before. Yeah, uh, and you know I've talked about this before, but when I lived in and worked with my brother on the homeless project, and we spent uh, several weeks on the streets living with homeless folks, it really opened my eyes and. Homeless people are out of the vision of most people. Mm -hmm. Most people don't see them. That's why I call them ghost people because they're mm -hmm. all around us. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ponca City is full of homeless people. Yeah. And so is all of Cake County. Yeah. They're everywhere, but most people have no vision to be able to identify who they are. That's right. Because um, uh, they're not they're not seeking or, or seeing right. them they, at they all. They haven't seen through somebody else's eyes. And, and right. in vision, we need to be looking through some form of eyes that allows us to see. Mm -hmm. And so when the scripture says a people without vision perish, it's talking about how Israel had lost their vision that God had given them mm -hmm. and, and it was costing them. Mm -hmm. And so having the vision of Christ is, is really significant. And, mm -hmm. uh, and what should it be, our vision? You know, yeah. what does that mean? What does that mean? Because oftentimes we we miss what is just right in front of us um, if we're not, um, have a purpose of, of looking for that and looking for where God is leading us. Yeah. The old proverb that we've read this morning is true. Mm -hmm. uh, it's as true for us today as it was for those it was written it's for right. in that day. It's right. The vision that we should have is the vision that God has for us. Not our vision, but the vision of God that we have been adopted into, yeah. that he invites us into. And yeah. we need this vision to shape us and to motivate us and to move us. And to move us, right? I do, to keep us moving in, right. in the way that God and Spirit is moving us. And, not, yeah, and, not so fixed on traditions, though. Yeah, because um, yeah. God is doing a new thing. Um, over, God, over and over again, he's yeah. doing a new thing. Um, it's yeah. just, are we perceiving it right yeah. and this is the epiphany season and right. it's a time of yeah. epiphany as a church we celebrate the coming of the magi um, and, yeah. and that is you know the three kings sunday and then the following sunday which is a sunday mm -hmm. the baptism of jesus yeah. and during this time um, it's called epiphany because it's a great awakening it's a realization that that we're in a new age that things are new that's right yeah and in, in the Magi, they teach us uh, this uh, lesson that uh, the good news of Jesus was for everyone. Right. The Magi were foreigners. They, yeah. they were a different race. Yeah, they, were, they had a 
different religion. Yeah, uh, astrology, um, <laughs> which was, they were astrologists or worshippers of the stars or starlight. And... That's right, but, but they had also a vision, um, and God used their faith to lead them home by a new light. Right, new well, light. God used their faith to lead them to Jesus. Right. The and new then, vision. And then God <laughs> used them through Jesus Christ to go home under a new light, the light of Jesus. The and, light of Christ. You that's know, right. I when I think about that, that's so amazing. And and this story that's found in Matthew must have been a real affront to the Jewish people mm -hmm. because here everything about the Magi were different from them. And there's so much we don't know about them, but we know they were foreigners. We know they were from a different race. We know that they... Uh, different country. Yeah, a different country. Uh, we know that they entered in a time of great turmoil where Herod, uh, along mm -hmm. with, uh, was trying to use them to, to get to Jesus, uh, this person that was supposed to be the Messiah. That's right. And, but they were led by God and through the light of Christ, home in a new way. A new way. And a transforming way. Yeah. And then we get to the baptism of Jesus. And here again, there's a new age, something new that's happening. Yeah. Uh, Jesus demonstrated in his baptism our need to be baptized, true, but the need for him to be baptized by John. Yes. And for a lot of people, this becomes a bit confusing. We don't talk about it much in mm -hmm. the church. Mm -hmm. But it's a baptism of renunciation. John was out there in the desert outside, just outside of the Holy mm -hmm. Lands, and he was renouncing the powers and the principalities of the kingdom of the world. Of the of old Rome. ways. Yeah, the old ways. Mm -hmm. But he was also renouncing how... The temple system had got polluted through the politics of the world. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus had to renounce these things to be able to be who he was called to be. Yeah. And to be in the will of his yeah. Father. Yeah, and, um, and those, <coughs> those being baptized then, his followers that day, they found a new age, a new way. Mm -hmm. And it had begun in Christ, in the Messiah. Yeah. And so they dropped their nets, right? Yeah, right, and they followed this new vision. New vision, and this was the epiphany. Yeah. This was a great awakening and the recognition of the new beginnings in Christ, in Jesus, right. as it started. And, and so that's why yeah. this is the epiphany season, but mm -hmm. our vision is to go and to make disciples of Christ for the transformation of the world. Our, that's, that's our mission, that's right, yeah. and it's our vision as well. And if there is no vision, though, um, independent in what that means, mm -hmm. then who are we, you know? And I think if we have no vision for mm -hmm. ethnic persons, well, our ministry is going to be limited to white Protestants, mm -hmm. and that would be tragic. Yes. But I think beyond that, it would be sinful, Yeah. you know? Yeah. And if we have no vision for the hungry or the homeless or the hopeless, our church and our ministry will be limited to just those who are filled. Yeah, that are those filled. who yeah. have yeah. everything they need. Yeah. And if we have no vision for the single, uh, you know, the single or the gay persons or or uh, those, uh, you know, around us um, that aren't like us right. or um, our ministry will only help the traditional family. Right. And, right. Uh, and in all of these things, I think that would be far outside of the vision of the transformation of the world that Christ mm -hmm. calls us to. Mm -hmm. As the church, our vision or lack of vision determines our interests, our directions, our finances. It affects the totality of who we are as Christians and as a church. Yeah, and if, um, you know, unless the church has a shared vision, unless we have a shared vision together, in due time we will just reach our end. Yeah. Like the scripture says, they will perish. Yeah. And those first Christians were always motivated by and they moved with 
the vision in which God gave them. I, I think about the foundation of even our local congregations mm -hmm. and how much trust in the vision that Christ had for them. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, John Wesley, the founder of the Methodism, and and one time he said that he said, "Give me a hundred men who love nothing but God and hate nothing but sin." And we will shake the whole world for Christ. Yeah. And Wesley had a great vision for what the church could be. Mm -hmm. And I would say the same. If yeah. we have 10 people dedicated to the transformation yeah. of the world, beginning in our community, in yeah. each of our congregations, we yeah. can transform our community. Yeah, with Christ. Yeah, and man. it's a great vision. It's yeah. true. Amen. In our community, though, Francis, it's it's constantly changing. <laughs> it's always well, Yeah, that's changing. almost an understatement. But Especially you're right, now. our whole world is changing so rapidly. But the question is, do we believe that God is a creative God? Mm. You know? Good question, uh, yeah. One that guides us to be effective even in times where there is rapid change happening. Yeah. And can we see that while the vision may not change, how we move must change if we are to follow God's right. ever-changing Holy Spirit? Yeah, you know, the Spirit is called Ruach or wind for a reason because it's constantly shifting, constantly moving. That's right. Are we coming alongside the Spirit of God at work in our changing community? Lord, do you know? we... Have we grown stuck in our own ways, in our yeah. old ways? Have we yeah. been stuck? Stagnant stuff smells <laughs> bad. <laughs> you know, I, I kind of figured that out. You know, uh, moving and running water smells so fresh and clean. But yeah. A stagnant old pond. But anyway, how will we reach the unchurched in the future? That's the question I have for us as God's people. Yeah, and do we need a new plan? A plan, a, yeah, that lines up. Yeah, a plan that lines up with the needs within our world and, and those around us. A plan that lines up with where we see our vision, God's vision, and God at work amongst yeah. us. And so today on our online service, we're going to end on that thought um, as we work within the context of each of our church communities. Mm -hmm. We're going to be looking at more of what we hope to accomplish this year. Where are we going to be able to move alongside what God is doing in each of our areas of our community mm -hmm. and uh, really join together in this work of visioning what our future is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'm excited about this year. Me too. Changes um, bring yeah. possibilities yeah. and, you know, and changes don't allow stagnation to happen. Yeah. I'm excited for what God's going to do yeah. Um, yeah. In, in our midst. And, uh, and, in, and, and you know, it, it's like this statement back here. <laughs> yeah. It's about trusting and trusting in the Lord thy God. Right. And so when we come back to this, he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And I, and I think about that. <coughs> and the law really is about following God. Uh, walking in God's footsteps, the mm -hmm. God who loves everyone and mm -hmm. calls us to do the same. Let's sing our closing benediction together. Let's do. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be great. Gracious, gracious to you, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give.